Are you in a couple looking for a third? Or are you single and searching for a dating app that actually encourages you to embrace your sexual side? Field values sex positivity and encourages you to share your desires and interests directly to your profile. You can share freely about how traditional or how kinky you may be. And here's some great news. You can download the app for free by going to field.co. Just click on the link in our episode description to get the Field app for free today. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. My guest today is Sin Sage. She is a true veteran. She's been in the industry for over 20 years. She has made everything from niche clips to award-winning performances. She's known as one of the best girl-girl performers, hands down, in the industry. And I'm so excited to have her here. So thank you so much, Sin, for coming on. It is uh, so very much my own pleasure I've wanted to come on this podcast for years, so I'm very excited to be here. Thank you. <laughs> That's so cool. It's funny because I I don't ever think like, I don't know. I, I feel like I think I have this weird thing where I think that like no one listens to this show. Oh my <laughs> and God, I was, what? <laughs> I was talking to somebody else about this and I think another podcaster and I think it's because like I sit here in a studio like by myself or with my guest and my sound engineer, and we just like kind of talk into the ether. So even yeah. though I see like numbers and I get like responses on social media, it still feels kind of like it's just like me like talking into a mic and like no one gives a shit. So thank you so much. <laughs> I'm, I'm super honored to hear that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so I, um, so, you know, when I introduced you, I really did, you know, mean that you are you know, literally known as like the best female performer in the industry when it comes to like the girl, girl niche. And what specifically sticks out in my mind is actually like, so Danny Daniels is a very good friend of mine. And I know that you two had an award winning scene. In fact, it won the AVN award for best girl, girl scene, um, for Danny Daniels dare. And I just remember her like kind of raving about you and about that scene and just how you were incredible. And almost every girl that I know who has worked with you has said the same. So maybe tell us a little bit about that scene specifically and like what sets you apart as being such an extraordinary girl, girl performer. (laughs) Well, first of all, I I was getting just like goosebumps um, as we were saying that all that stuff. That's so awesome. (laughs) And yeah, I mean, that scene for sure. Um, I was honored that Danny came to me to, you know, be her girl, girl scene in that particular movie. And, um, I had worked with her before and the scenes were always good. I mean, she's beautiful and she's a great performer, but that day something felt a little different. And, um, you know, when, when we got to the point where, and it was cool too, because it was literally just Mason with her camera. And then me and Danny. So I always find those like intimate um, setups can, I don't know, there's like a little bit uh, more ease to it. Um, And once we started going at it, I was just like, there was this fire, this spark in Danny that was um, different from the previous times that we had shot together. So uh, I think we just really, really met each other's energy uh, in that scene. And it was so active and just really passionate and really sexy. And I think that, you know, and when when that scene ended, when it was like cut, we're just there like breathless. And I look at them both and I was like, if I was ever going to win an award for any scene, that scene would be the one that that it would happen with. So uh so then when the nomination came out i was like oh that's you know wonderful but i don't see this really happening for me because i just really felt that 
girls like me didn't win those kinds of awards, like girls that only did girl, girl. And I, and previously I'd even been told by agents, things like this. And, um, even AVN itself, like they had the one category of best girl, girl scene, but that was pretty much it for performers who only worked with other women. So, um, so yeah, that night when they announced the award, like I wasn't even in the room, actually, I had like left the room and I got a Twitter notification on my phone that said that we won the award. And I was like, what? And so I go in and Danny's already up on the stage and I'm like running down the aisle, I'm like waving my arms. I was like, I'm here. Oh my God. Like, I did not want to miss this moment. It was so silly. I run up on the stage and she just like grabbed me and kissed me. And I was like, this is fucking amazing. And I was so taken by surprise. I had nothing in my head already to say so I just kind of blurted out some shit <laughs> about loving to eat pussy and stuff like that so <laughs> um but it was definitely like <laughs> for sure it was you know the highlight of my, my career in the sense that it was something I never truly believed would happen um and then to just get that recognition like from my peers meant so much to me because this isn't just like a job I do this is my career this is my passion I, I really put myself into it and um so to, to to get that like formal recognition from my industry, uh, yeah, felt amazing, um, felt really validating. And um, to you, the second part of your question, I I think that, um, I think I just, <laughs> the main thing I guess is that I, I'm very much genuinely attracted to women uh, in a very real sexual way. So I think that just kind of shines through. Um, you know, in my performances. And I guess I, I approach each performance kind of from like a, a really down to earth place um, that I'm working with another human being. Uh, before the scene starts, I try to build like rapport and make sure that we're both comfortable and we're talking to each other a little bit and find out like, what do you like? What do you not like? Um, because you know, my goal is always to very much make the, my partner come for real. If, and you know, if they don't, that's fine too. But I, at least like, I want to have like a genuine sexual experience with my partner. Um, and it's like incredibly rewarding and fun and it feels amazing. And so I don't know, I, I maybe that's why. <laughs> so basically you love what you do and it shows through your work. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll never forget. I was very honored to about maybe like 10 years ago or something. And I, we were, I was out at a shoot with a couple of like, well known performers. Um, it was like Christina Rose and Misty Stone and um, just a few other people skin diamond. We're sitting around and talking and just about work. <laughs> Um, but Misty Stone said to me, she was like, you sin, when you touch a woman, like, it feels different. It feels like fire. It feels like passion. When she said that to me, I was just like, oh, I can't believe you're saying this to me. Like, this is amazing. Cause like, I, you know, I look up to her. She's, she's incredible. So, and I also always feel just like, like, wow, I get to have sex with this woman. Are you cool with this? And she's like, yes, I love to. I can't wait. And I'm like, oh my God, really? <laughs> Like, I'm still just, you know, in awe that I get to do what I do, I guess. And people take me seriously. <laughs> yeah. I mean, almost 20 years later, it's like yeah. you're you're still getting to do what you love. Yeah. So okay. I want to ask you what happens when you're on, because we all know, you know, there are girls in this industry who are like, quote unquote, gay for pay. They're not into women. And, um, you know, if a few of them, we kind of know by name, of course, we're not going to out anybody, but <laughs> what do you do when you have a scene with a girl who's like clearly not into chicks? Like how, cause you talked about building a rapport before the yeah. scene. What do you do when like that rapport kind of doesn't exist? You know, it's interesting because, um, looking back over my career, I feel like I haven't encountered that too often. Um, but there's definitely times where, like, at least I've never had it to where a person straight out said, like, I don't like girls, but my agent booked me and I'm just doing this for the money. Like, that's never happened. 
But I think there are times when it's been sort of indicated to me that look at me fucking this guy and like talking about guys all the time and yada, yada. And I'm just like, oh, okay, I see what's going on here. Um, you know, in that circumstance, I just rely on my desire. So I'm like, you know, I'm fine if she just wants to lay there. Like, I will make it good all over her. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, if she's not into it, I'm like, hmm. Well, first, I'm going to try to show you how good this can be. And I have had that switch over happen before. We're like in the middle of the scene. Maybe she's really coming. And all of a sudden, she's like, oh, this can be fun. Um, <laughs> but I was going to ask you, I was going to ask you if that had happened to you, because I feel like that that might have. You made a yeah. like. Where she started turned, out turned the scene, girl. yeah, where she started out the scene where she's being like super performative and I can see that's what's happening. Um, but by the time like I've made her come once or twice, now she's just like genuinely having a good time and I can feel that vibe change. Um, and I've had it to where, you know, they're all, they're just kind of um, a little lackluster or maybe they're newer um, so they don't quite know how this whole thing has to go yet. Uh, You know, you never know what someone else is going through. So I just try to enjoy them. Like if they're not going to be into it, like I can still enjoy them. (laughs) If that makes sense. I can still have a good time. (laughs) I, I feel, I feel lucky. I feel blessed because truly that has not happened very often. Mm hmm. Uh, what do you think has changed, if anything, in the girl girl genre since you started in in the industry? I mean, we can't deny that, like, you know, I've been in the industry for twenty three years. It has changed dramatically over the last couple of decades. Like, what have you oh seen gosh. specifically in your in the girl girl genre that has changed? Well, one thing for sure is that uh, it's become a force of its own. You know, when I when I first kind of came into the business, and I always only worked with women. Um, It was very much like it would come and be popular for a little while and then the wave would crash and die down for a little while and then it would come back up and then it would go down. And I feel like that's another reason why, you know, like we didn't have an, a girl, girl only performer of the year category at ABN for until 2014. So, you know, I just feel like it was a thing that wasn't taken like, a legitimate genre kind of, but you know, our society has changed a lot too since then. Uh, we have marriage equality. We have like a lot more queer acceptance and stuff like that uh, and, and visibility. So since then, um, yeah, I think it's now it's seen much less as uh, something that's only for the male gaze and much more as something that's like uh, men and women, like all genders like to see this, sort of thing like to look at two beautiful women making love you know it's uh so in that sense i i think that in popularity it's grown um it's more accepted uh and i think that's awesome and it, and you know i can only speak for myself too that like as i've become more um producer content creator uh and gearing myself in the direction of queer like to catering more to queerness and queer audiences that for me, it feels like it's, it's only gotten bigger and more of it and richer um, (laughs) in that sense. So uh, I'm just, I, I couldn't be happier for that (laughs) because obviously I love love that representation. So um, you talked about being a producer. Um, So you started Sin Stage Studios So what motivated you to start that and what kind of content are you creating? Yeah. So uh, for me, it was just, you know, I had always wanted to incorporate some creation into my performance as well. Like, so the first 10 years of my career, it was kind of just a lot of being directed, being working for other people. I get a little taste here and there of being the director, but I wanted to make sure like that. I wanted to not only be in more sort of queer representative porn, but I was like, I want to make this stuff. And as I started producing custom videos, like that's kind of where it all began, like where the studios sort of started. Um, I was working with uh, Courtney Trouble 
a lot and I just ask them like, uh, you know, can I pick your ear about being like a studio? How, how do I make that happen? And they were just like, oh, well, why don't you just put together a movie and then we'll distribute it and then we can just distribute your movies and then you have a studio. And I was like, wow, perfect. And so um, right off the bat, I took a few scenes that I had already created and we put them together and Courtney designed this lovely, you know, box cover and we wrote up the blurbs and they made the movie, you know, seamless and we came out with strap on sinners. Um, so that to me that since then, you know, I've just made, um, like threesome movies and more strap on movies and trans lesbian movies. And so it's just that this is the stuff that I want to be making, um, and putting out into the world and want to see more of, uh, even on, you know, it'd be cool to see more of that on like mainstream, like different types of representation that aren't necessarily based on what's going to sell the most. Although I understand how capitalism works. Uh, but for me, it's more like a passion thing. And I want to make the stuff that I know there are people out there just wanting to see that representation, wanting to get off to it. So that's important for me. And that's kind of like what we're all about. <laughs> so you, you mentioned strap on scenes and, you know, I've shot mostly girl, girl content, um, my whole career. And I always kind of wince a little bit when people ask me to shoot strap on scenes, because I often find that, um, unless you get the right people to perform in the scene, it generally doesn't go very well. I've also found that like most strap ons themselves are just lacking. Like they don't, attach correctly or the dildo attachment is like uncomfortable or too long or too short or too thick. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. and, 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 and it's, it's not that easy to, as a woman, put the strap on on and, you know, fuck another woman. So like, <laughs> what would you say makes you, or, or I don't know, let me put this another way for someone who's interested in engaging in strap on sex with, um, with a woman, do you have any tips or tricks or like, what's the best way to wear a strap on? So <clears throat> yes, first of all, the first part of what you said, like, I totally hear you and I understand and I see you. <laughs> um, it's part of the reason why I don't really like to receive <clears throat> with strap on. And luckily I've reached a point where a producer is never going to really ask me to receive because they want me to do it um because you're the fucking like queen of strap on everybody knows that <laughs> <laughs> have been called that a few times um so <clears throat> let's start with the basic hardware uh you're you're so right you know a lot of times you know even a producer or whatever director will go and just buy the strap on this is a strap on sin here here's the box with the strap on in it you know um those are terrible. Like, please don't do that. Don't go to Adam and Eve and just buy, you know, this thing that's made of a few strings that go around. That's just not going to work. Um, so over the years, I found a company called Spare Parts, and they make a functional strap-on that is comfortable, that uh, is the band is thick enough to where it doesn't, like, cut into your flesh and look unflattering. It's Easy Which is another big on. thing too. Yeah, a lot I of times when I put strap-ons on girls, they're like, this makes me look fat and ugly. I don't want to wear it. I right. That's happened so many times. Yeah. Um, because it's like a thin band of like leather or something. And so it digs into your flesh, even if you're not like fat or whatever. It's like, it just, it's just not flattering. Um, and it's not functional. It doesn't, like you said, it doesn't hold the dong where it needs to. It doesn't hold it in place. Uh, so spare parts. I, I've emailed them, tried to see if they want to get into uh, um, to sponsor me. But, you know, I heard nothing back. So I'll just keep continue to give them free, uh, <laughs> free advertisement because I... I've never, I've found other, I've used other strap on harnesses. Nothing works like spare parts. They've got a couple different designs you can use. Um, and they're just so easy and they work so well. 
the dong stays exactly in place. There's uh, multiple points where you can adjust to make sure you have it set properly. And it's like it Velcros off and on. So you can adjust it. Like if you need to adjust it mid scene, you can just do it real quick. So I love that company. Um, the dong, I always feel like doesn't, is not as important as long as everybody's comfortable with it. But I find that the floppier the dong is just, it's not going to work as well. Um, and also the stiffer a dong is, if it's too stiff or the material is too hard, that's uncomfortable for the person receiving it. So I like a good silicone that has like a core in it, but it's not too, um, it's not too hard. Um, so yeah, I put that together <laughs> and then, um, and then for me, it really is, a, it's when you wear one as a female identified person, I think that you just really, really have to tap into your sort of gender fluidity. Um, if, if you can open that door just a little bit in your mind, I feel like you can get there physically. So for me, I, I am gender fluid. I do identify that way. So it's really easy. Like, uh, when I put on a strap on, I very much become attached to that strap on. Um, I can even get some physical sensation like inside, like deep in my clit, uh, deep in my pussy, where I'm feeling sensation as I'm using the strap on. Even if it's like in the other girl's mouth, I can look and see. And, you know, our biggest sex organ is our brain. And it's just all connecting there for me. And I get into it physically. So you know, and then I just think about the ways that I've been fucked, um, that I enjoyed it. And I apply that to what I'm doing, you know, uh, try to use your hips to move forward and back rather than your whole body. Um, just try to connect with that dick. Like that, those are, the, those are the tips that I give people when, when they ask, because I, I just, you have to really embrace some masculinity when you're in that role. And uh, that's that's how you can make it good and feel real, uh, feel, yeah, authentic. Do you find that? Do you find that it uses like different muscles in your body? Like, do you do you find that you're sore afterwards in places that you wouldn't normally be sore in a regular workout? Like, this may sound like a dumb question, but are there like even specific exercises that you feel like you should do in order to like keep those thrusting? Because, you know, when I've shot strap-on scenes with girls who don't have a ton of experience, I've heard so many times saying, like, wow, this is kind of like I'm using muscles that, like, I don't normally use. So, like, this is kind of <laughs> unusual for me, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, I find if, when I'm sore afterwards, if I was really going for it, it's kind of a little bit of, like, inner thigh. And um, – but mainly – uh, the soreness will come from like on my pubis mons where the base of the dildo has kind of been pressing against the bone. Like I'll feel a little bruisey right there. Um, but man, I, you know, I think it's just sexual stamina. I'm not even sure. Yeah. I'm sure having like a conditioning regimen would build up your stamina just like anything else. But I, I will yeah, say get I like your, you got to get your strap on squats on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I don't do that. Just, just I, I really don't, um, you know, work out or exercise. And that, nah. <laughs> I'll do it in spurts every couple of years <laughs> for like a few weeks. Um, so I think it's just more really being wrapped up in the moment. Like when I'm fucking a girl with a strap on, I'm just I'm like watching her face and her body for cues. And if she looks like she's getting there, I'm going to keep going until she gets there. Like it's this motivator inside of me that just like keeps my body going. <laughs> I'll worry about the exhaustion after the fact, you know? <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's that great. You should be. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it sounds, um, it definitely sounds like something that is like intrinsic to you. And I don't know that you have like this, uh, I feel like, do you ever like teach people how to use them? Like, have you ever like <laughs> given instruction to like girls? Like, do you do strap on workshops? You know, I have had 
countless people tell me that I should, that I need to, <laughs> that I need to make, a, you know, like write a book or have a class or make videos that are like more instructional. Um, I haven't really had too many chances to do that in like a real way. Um, it's something to consider for yeah. the future, for future content, for sure. <laughs> okay. Well, putting it out into the universe. Um, yeah. Yeah. Sin stages, strap on sessions. I mean, yeah. The name and everything, all the I S's. Know. It's like it I all know. works so perfectly. It's all about alliteration in this industry for sure. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll come back and talk about more Sin Sage and what she's been up to these days. So hang tight and we'll see you in just a few moments. In a couple looking for a third or are you single and searching for a dating app that actually encourages you to embrace your sexual side? Field is the alternative dating app for couples and singles. As the largest dating community of progressive humans across the globe, Field connects the curious and the open-minded. Field has built a community for awesome, ethical, like-minded people who can explore their sexuality with others free of judgment or shame. Whether you're into cuddles and long walks on the beach or shibari and BDSM, Field welcomes it all. You can share freely about how traditional or how kinky you may be. The app is inclusive to all, no matter your gender or orientation. When you join, you can choose from over 20 sexual and gender identity options. And here's some great news. You can download the app for free by going to field.co. Just click on the link in our episode description to get the Field app for free today. All right, guys, we are back. So Sin, um, let me ask you about your origin story. How did you get into the adult industry in the first place? Yeah, so it's interesting. I... I will, I've always been a performer since the, I was probably like five or six. Um, but even before then, anytime someone busted out an old VHS camcorder, I was jumping in front of it and <laughs> dancing around. Um, been doing stage uh, theater since I was like six years old, community theater, uh, high school drama. I did choir all through middle school and high school, show choir, singing and dancing, took dance classes. So for me, um, just performance was going to be a part of my life no matter what. And I felt very sexual at a pretty young age. Um, I didn't engage a lot, but I just had those feelings and I knew, uh, I knew I wanted to be a stripper. I knew I wanted to be a porn star from a, a young age, to be honest. And uh, when I turned 18, I just went and looked for it, the work I that I wanted to do. Um, we used to have something called, you know, it still exists, LA Weekly, OC Weekly. They're like little paper, actual physical paper um, <laughs> print ads and stuff like this and stories. And in the back of it were always these classifieds that were like uh, nude models needed between these ages. And I just went and found those, called those numbers, came out, did some photo shoots, uh, got on the internet, went on like one model place. I got a lot of, you know, oh photography. God, one model place. There. <laughs> yeah. It used to be free. Uh, I haven't looked at it in probably 15 years, but <laughs> I don't think anyone's looked at it in 15 years. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> Um, but that kind of kick, kick started things for me, uh, working at the strip club, I met a, a dancer who was like, oh yeah, my boyfriend's getting my website going. And I was like, really? I've always, what I really want is a website. And she's like, oh, he can get you going with it. And that turned out to be a God awful situation, but it did bring me to my first, uh, AVN convention here in Vegas. And uh, that was 2003 and I had little business cards or so cheesy, uh, made up and when just walked right up to booths and was like, Hey, I want to work for you. How do, how do we make this happen? I got some bookings right, right off the bat with, uh, Gwen media, which I don't think exists for a long time now, but it was like a latex bondage S and M kind of fetish company that made porn yeah. to, you know, integrated. I, I remember yeah, them. So that was my first shoot ever. My first uh, girl, girl scene was 
latex clad and <laughs> out in Moore Park somewhere in a giant house for 12 hours, you know. So I was really thrown oh in. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, how was that? Because like latex itself is just such a fucking bitch to yes. put on and to wear. It looks amazing, but it is such right. a pain in the ass. And for that to be your first girl, girl scene. <laughs> Yeah, can you take us? I agree. Yeah, can you take us through that experience a little bit more? And do you remember who it was that you worked with? I do actually. Her name was Anna Mills, um, and you know I she knew. Her. Yeah, and and she was so friendly to me, and she knew it was my first time, um, and she was just very. She like kind of went out of her way to, you know, make me feel good, m make me feel sort of accepted kind of a thing. Cause you can go in there being the brand new one and feel really like intimidated by everything that's going on. So she was really assuaging that for me and it was really nice. Um, luckily the latex that we wore was kind of like bra and panty, like bikini style, but you know, you got the latex thigh highs and everything. I mean, it's, oh, it's certainly I not hate comfortable. putting those on, <laughs> you know, I it's like, there's a couple of different ways to put it on. I remember my mom used to shoot latex a lot. And I remember she like told me to put like baby powder on and, and put it, use the baby powder to help put it on that way. And then yes. you always had to clean the baby powder off of it, which was such a bitch. But then I realized later, I think Justine Jolie taught me, she's like, no, just fucking put lube all over yourself and oh. then we put it on because <laughs> the lube, you need to like shine it up anyways. Exactly. But then like, with the stockings, if you get the air bubble, so then like we would poke like a hole in the toe to like help the air escape. But if you poked too big of a hole, it might rip, rip. and then like you're fucked because they're so yeah. expensive and yeah. you can't fix a rick. Oh my God. No. <laughs> oh yeah. It's a, it's a whole thing. I feel like latex is better for photography than video. Um, for all those reasons. <laughs> yeah, and for it's sure. Just, it's so sweaty and noisy and, you know, yeah, it's very uncomfortable. But, um, but that day, you know, the, of the things that I was nervous about, it was more like a feeling of intimidation than anything else. Uh, doing what we did, it just, it came pretty naturally to me. Um, I just knew that I liked I was an exhibitionist for sure. So I knew that about myself. Uh, it just was very apparent and it wasn't too, um, wasn't too nerve wracking. The, the worst parts of that first shoot were that I was living in Palm Springs at the time and the shoot was in Moore Park and I was, you know, 19 and I didn't know the freeways of Southern California that well, cause I hadn't been driving them for very often. And, my God, that was a very, very long drive that I went out there, but crack of dawn in the morning to make it there by 10 a.m. Of course, I didn't even get into makeup until like three or four, didn't shoot the scene till like six, and it was two scenes, so we weren't done until like 10 or 11, and I have to drive all the way home, and there was no GPS, I did not have a cell phone, those things like they barely existed. Uh, so did you I have to lost. use a, did you have to use a Thomas guide? I, I <laughs> didn't. That nobody time. knows what that is. I do because, um, <laughs> I did at one day I was going out to a different fetish shoot. I got lost because I didn't know LA that well at the time. And I pulled over and I used a pay phone and the guy was like, I don't know where you are, so I can't tell you how to get here. And I was like, oh my God. And I, a trucker who had a Thomas guide was like, do you have the address <laughs> here? Let me help you out. And like, help me out with the Thomas guide. So I wrote the directions down. Like it was wild back in the, <laughs> you it's know. so funny when you <laughs> think about like those, like the, the younger generation, but they really like, don't know, like things, it was fucking oh. hard to get around. I had a Thomas guide in my car. I used to get yeah. lost all the time. Yeah. Um, you know, and even when we had the internet, but before we had cell phones, well, okay, yes. you got your map quest directions, yes. which you had to print out and bring with you. But if you somehow went like off of the map quest directions, like you were fucked. Totally lost. Yeah. yeah. And I didn't at the time, I did not have a computer 
I would just go to an internet cafe and use their computer. <laughs> so I didn't even have like the printable version. I would actually ask the people, how do I get there from here? Like what freeways do I take? And I'd write it down by hand. And like, that's how I'd go. It was, yeah, it was the wild west. So <laughs> those were uh, the days. <laughs> yeah. But you know, so I drove home and I was just exhausted. I had to pull over at some point and sleep for like 30 minutes before I got all the way home. And, uh, but you know, it was great. (laughs) Overall, it was great. And it was just like, yes, this is definitely for me. Like I never, I never really questioned it. There, there was a time period when I think my personal life, my relationship was bad and I had very, very toxic people around me. Um, and I think, at that time, I was kind of questioning, like, a little bit I allowed, like, what the world thinks of me to get in. Um, I tried to get a job doing something else, and it was just so pathetic. <laughs> I was like, why am I trying this hard to just, like, fit my life into what I think that the world wants or expects of me when the things that I desire, the things that I want and dream of, are right there. And I just have to go get them and say, fuck what other people think about this. Um, so if anything, that time just really fortified my decision to do this kind of work and, um, thank God (laughs) because it's been great. (laughs) So you've been exclusively a girl, girl performer, pretty much your entire career, but you have started making boy, girl scenes with your husband. So can you tell us a little bit about that and maybe how it's different making that kind of content and, you know, what are the differences and do you have a preference over one or the other? (laughs) Yes, for sure. So, so, so when I first got into the industry for me, it was like, I was in, again, I was like 18, 19. Um, I was in a committed relationship with my boyfriend and wasn't even really a question like, would I do boy, girl or girl, girl? It was just like, well, I'm not going to sleep with other guys. Um, and prior to me even entering like this video portion of doing this kind of work, uh, obviously I had talked to him a lot about like what I want to do and what I, what I want to do for a living and that I wanted to strip, that I wanted to make porn. So, you know, he, he, he never tried to say like, no, you can't do that. But it was just that, uh, you know, sleeping with another guy would be cheating. And so it just kind of like made sense. And for me anyways, like, um, I was fine with that because I love being with women. And, uh, so to me, um, it wasn't like a restriction. It was just like, this is naturally what I'll do. Um, sounds like you guys like kind of mutually agreed on like what, what you wanted to do. Yeah. Yeah. It, like it just wasn't even a question of if I would do guys, it was just that I wouldn't, <laughs> you know, right, right. I never even really thought about that re- before I got into the business. Um, you know, one of the first like porns I had ever watched was something I found, uh, <clears throat> won't go too much into it, but it was a lesbian orgy, um, you know, with all the big poofy hair and gigantic wishes and shit. Um, (laughs) so, you know, I just, I already knew that that's what I would do. Um, and I was in that relationship for nine years. It was bad. It was a really bad relationship. Um, I had wanted him, you know, I was always like, uh, let's do some stuff together. Like just come and perform with me. Like, you know, it'll be fine. He was insecure and he, you know, he just didn't want to be on camera. And then he had less and less interest in my job. So I'd go to work, I'd come back. He wouldn't ask me about it. It was just not something that we really talked much about. So that was always a bummer too. Um, and then we finally broke up. I got rid of that anchor dragging down my life. And, uh, (laughs) came out into this new world as a single adult. Um, And all of a sudden I had this opportunity. I'd been in the industry for a long time at that point already. I had shot boy girl, like held camera for boy girl scenes. Um, I knew 
you know, male performers and I knew who, who was good and who to stay away from and all these sorts of things. So I could have, I could have taken that freedom, so to speak, and been like, uh, let's do it. Let's jump into boy girl. But there were a lot of reasons why I, I chose not to, um, I'd say, I thought it was something that I should really think about for a long time before I just decided to do it. Um, because I was really pretty happy where I was with things and, um, ultimately it didn't seem like the right choice for me, uh, regardless of anything else. But then I met my now husband and, um, I told him right when we met, uh, what I did for a living and he was enthusiastic about it. <laughs> um, he was just like, that's awesome. I love porn. That's very cool. And kind of went from there. So uh, as we became very serious, we dated probably within the first year or so, I'd say, I was like, hey, do you want to jump on webcam with me? And let's let's try that. And he was, you know, my partner now was very confident and had just it has continues to have a beautiful cock that is wonderful in every way and it functions just so perfectly and it works great for shooting which can be very challenging um for for men i feel like a lot of times male performers don't don't really get as much credit as they deserve because it is hard for them like <laughs> there's a yeah, lot of I've pressure <laughs> I've uh, said that so many times and I I actually was kind of thinking as you were saying that like you may have like missed out not missed out that's the wrong word but like dodged the bullet on a lot of like bad scenes because yeah. you know any girl who's done boy girl for a long period of time has been with a guy who's failed has been with like maybe a new performer who just couldn't do it and has just had and, and, and since it sounds like you've shot camera for boy girl scenes, you may have been there. And it's just like, there's nothing worse than your, when you have to call a scene because the guy can't oh, complete the job. It is just like humiliating for everybody. It's just, for it's everybody. just the worst. Yeah. It's just, ugh. And I mean, I'm, I obviously have been around for so long and I'm friends with everybody that you know does boy girl and stuff. So I, I've heard so many bad stories to, I feel like that's probably another factor in my, you know, my ultimate decision is there's, there's just, there's just lots of things that can go wrong. <laughs> yeah. You don't, you I, don't, that's, and you don't necessarily have those with just, you know, working with women. So. Yeah. And that's a big reason why I actually really enjoy shooting girl, girl scenes over mm -hmm. boy, girl scenes, because it's like, I don't need to worry about someone not being able to get it up that day. Yeah. And also like a uh, penis and vagina can get very tender and sore. And when you have to stop and start and stop and start, and then I've had it in my personal life where a, a cock that is not quite where it needs to be in terms of stiffness is still trying to go in and that can actually make you like really sore. <laughs> so yeah, it's like shoving like a wet rope. Like, yeah. <laughs> It's yeah. Awful. It's just not fun. So, um, but yeah, so we tried out the, the webcam thing and it was just fantastic. And, uh, I was like, do you want to just do this with me? Um, and he was enthusiastically. Yes. So, uh, after we had been together for a while and we got married and, um, I had already sort of trained him on, uh, shooting me with camera then I trained him on editing and, uh, from there we just like grew piece by piece. And now we were trying to get other people to hire us together for boy girl. And we did a few scenes, but, um, and it was great. You know, everything works out perfectly, but we've come to the point now where it's like, we'd really just rather do it for ourselves. For the most part, we have a couple of companies that will hire us as a couple, but, uh, sort of our thing is that we perform together. So if you want Sin Sage Boy Girl, it's got to be with Drake. And um, and then we we do a lot of threesomes. Like just That's just something we love. <laughs> and we're passionate about it. Threesome. We like group stuff. Like the more people, the more fun it is kind of. So um, 
but we have yet to do like a boy boy girl thing uh that being said um i'm just very very picky with men so this is why i don't do boy girl really aside from my my husband because I'm just super duper picky and I want to know the person. I want to feel comfortable with them because we've had conversations. I want to like them. Uh, and I just feel differently about um, women. So, <laughs> so for That's me, understandable. yeah. You, do you think that you guys might do that though? And if, and if it's a possibility, do you have some names you're considering? Um, I think that it's definitely, I know that it's a possibility. We've discussed it uh, many times and we're, we're good with it. It's more just um, right time, right place, you know, right money, I guess. Again, um, you know, nobody's sort of like trying to book me for that or book us for that. And that's fine. I've gotten some customs that have come in and like asking about it Uh and I've been like, okay, I know who I can ask here in Vegas. And so, yeah, I've got some names of people that I would be comfortable with um, doing that. But I don't know. I'm not going to try to force it to happen. And if it happens, cool. And it'll be good for sure. But if not, that's okay, too. <laughs> I yeah. Um, yeah, I like what we do now. I feel happy and satisfied and fulfilled. So... <laughs> So yeah, that's, um, that's kind of yeah where we're at now. And we, we just now, you know, he quit his, uh, job. He was a diesel mechanic and he quit that back in like uh 20, the end of 2015. And we've just been running this company ever since. And, uh, it goes very well. He's an amazing cameraman. He's incredible with the camera. He does awesome editing. Like he's better than I am at both those things now. So. Oh, that's so great. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's like the key when you, your significant other can do camera work and editing. Cause then it's like, you can shoot content anywhere, you know, yeah. and you can like go on vacation and you can like write it off if you shoot content while you're yep. gone yep. and like all those tricks, which is and like so great. We definitely do all of that. But the main thing for us too, is that, um, we wanted to do van life. And so we lived in the van 2016 until 2019 and we traveled around the country and, still shot customs and still shot with, uh, you know, anybody that we could find. Cause you know, now, nowadays you can have your only fans in fucking Nebraska or whatever. I mean, there are people everywhere who want to make content and, um, you just got to find them and we're fixing to get back on the road again. Uh, hopefully, hopefully before next year, but we'll see. <laughs> It's amazing it, how far we have come from the days when you had to drive four to five hours from Palm Springs with the Thomas Guide <laughs> to where we are now. Uh, yes, yes. I honestly, I felt I felt very trapped in Southern California because it was like I I had to have access to Los Angeles for most of my career. That's how it felt. I couldn't live somewhere else. Um, and yeah, in the past, you know, five six years, it's just like actually you can do this from anywhere with anyone, however you want. And uh, it's so freeing <laughs> to not yeah. have to live in LA because it's just getting harder and harder. Tell Most me about people. it. I live in LA. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. would actually, my husband and I, we've talked about it and we would move somewhere else if it weren't for two things, my job, because I'm a producer and I shoot for, you know, big brands. I still have to live in LA where all my crew is and, and, talent and stuff. And then my parents yeah. live here too, and we take care of them. So yeah, as well, but I would love when I hear that, I don't know if I would live in a van. I'm kind of too much. I, I don't know. I think I'm, I'm a little too like frou-frou for that. Really? Hey, but, it is not for everyone. Like yeah. bottom line, it isn't, you know, it's, it's very challenging. There are a lot of challenges, but for me, the reward is worth the challenges and, and everybody's yeah. got that inside themselves, like what, what's worth it, you know, for any given situation. So. Yeah, no, I mean, it's kind of embarrassing for me to like admit that I'm too much, um, like of a princess to do that. And no. cause my husband actually loves stuff like that. Like he <laughs> loves like 
when someone has like a van that's like outfitted for camping, he always wants to check it out. And he loves like, you know, looking at like, and he's, he's, he went through a phase once where he was like showing me all these camper vans and I was like, no. And then (laughs) I actually, I actually like for his birthday, um, I decided that I was going to like plan this really cool, like camping trip because I know he loves camping. Yeah. And, um, I like bought, I just, my attempt at giving him this gift was a perfect example of like how this is not my thing because I picked a camping spot that was like not even in California. Like I didn't realize that it was like a 12 hour drive or something like that. And then I bought this like cast iron, like camping cauldron or something that was just way too heavy and like, didn't make any sense to go anywhere. And he finally like said to me, he goes, look, babe, because I don't really actually want to go camping with you. And I was like, why not? He's like, cause it would not be fun. <laughs> like you're not a fun person to go camping with. So like, uh, let's just do something else. And I was so offended <laughs> because I like tried and he was like, you're not a camping person. So let's like, just, I don't want to go camping with you. If I'm going to go camping, I want to go camping with my friends, not with you. Cause you're not. Uh, fun you. And I was like, fine, uh, dick. But I mean, the thought, you put the thought in and that, that should Yeah, it was just terribly <laughs> planned. Coming from somebody who like is very proud of her planning skills from being a producer for 23 years, I right. did a really bad job planning <laughs> our, our camping trip. So maybe yeah. it was a sign. Um, it's a whole thing. So <laughs> one last thing I wanted to ask you about was custom videos, because you've mentioned yeah. that a couple of times. So um, tell us about the kinds of videos that you generally shoot. Do you have specific um, requests that you see crop up pretty often? And what have been like some of the most unusual requests that you've had? Yeah, so uh, I do make um, all kinds of custom videos. I mean, really just if you can think of it, I'll make it. Um uh, less now, you know, the credit card companies and the processing it's has affected all of these sites that I sell my stuff on. So I do get some requests that's like, well, I can make that for you, but now I have to charge more because I can't sell it in my stores anymore. Or I have to like mm-hmm. edit out certain things, yada, yada. Um, but other than that, I mean, we'll make it anything um, from benign, uh, non nude fetish. I mean, I get custom sometimes where it's like just me talking to the camera about something, telling a story for 10 minutes. So all the way up to hardcore sex scenes. Um, I personally don't do anal, but I'll do anal on other girls or we can do it in a three way or whatever they're asking for. Um, so it's just, uh, how much can you afford (laughs) sort of a thing? Um, so yeah, like uh, we've made such a wide variety of stuff. I mean, I like again being in this industry for twenty years. Like you really can't bring up something to me that I'm like, wow, I'm shocked. <laughs> you know, it's I've seen it all, heard it all, made it all. Um, but there are some weird uh, requests for sure. Uh, I think one of one of the weirdest things. Um, was this guy wanted us to, I think we were supposed to be giantess. Uh, we play with monster high dolls. So like little Barbies kind of, um, maybe a little bit smaller than a Barbie. And we are wearing rubber dish gloves. And um, we kind of dunk the dolls in the water and it's like soapy water. And then they come from their hair being pulled and messed with, but we're also like slapping and punching them in the face. And that was already weird enough, but he didn't just want like 10 minutes of that. He wanted 30 minutes of that. So I would say that was like one of the weirdest ones. Then he got another one where he also wanted us like cooking eggs on the stove um, at the same time. And I guess sort of taunting the dolls like they couldn't have the eggs. (laughs) Somebody Uh, has a very complicated relationship with their mother. Exactly. 100%. Yes. for, For sure. Where else? You know, you just know sometimes when you're making these, you're like, okay, so his mom washed dishes with these dish gloves and it makes the rubber noise. And I mean, just, you try to like get into the psychology of what, what they're asking for. But sometimes, you know, it's just a mystery and you just make the video. <laughs> 
And you don't ask questions. That's what you're, yeah. yeah. You're just there to fulfill that kink and yep. not try to psychoanalyze them. It's hard not to though yeah. sometimes. Like and sometimes I do want to ask guys like, where is this coming from? Yeah. And I, I think it's okay to psychoanalyze them in our ha- in our home, you know, like amongst, amongst us as performers, we're like, okay, what, what do you think this is about? You know? Um, but uh, for me, the most important thing when making a custom video is just reading what they wrote, asking them for more uh, details or to clarify certain things so that I can know for sure what it is that, what's their thing they're going for in this video, and then just do what they ask for. Like, uh, oftentimes, you know, I'll deliver a custom and they'll write back and they'll be like, you did everything I asked for. I I, I can't believe it. <laughs> I'm just like, really? <laughs> this, that's what the job is. You know, you paid me to make this thing for you. Um, but they say, you know, they've had customs made from other people and they just ignored half of it or they just did what they wanted. And I'm like, no, you order a custom video from me. The most important thing to me is making sure that you're getting exactly what you ask for. So, and that's regardless of my uh, opinion about it. Like I just don't judge at all. Um, And I, and uh, I love doing it actually. I get a lot of requests for, jerk off instruction videos. I'd say like, those are pretty common. Um, I do get a lot of strap on sex scenes with, you know, another, another girl. Uh, those are pretty common and those are definitely like my best sellers in my stores and stuff is the strap on. But, um, and of course I love doing that, but for me, when I do get like more of a weird fetish that requires me to, um, dig into my acting chops and really be creative with it. Like that's really fun. I love the stuff that's sort of uh, goofy or slapstick. So one time I had to pretend that I was like a robber coming into a house, but there was a ghost in the house that was beating me up I called that video ghost security. So it was like a <laughs> security guard was a ghost. So I just had to like throw myself around the room and pretend like I was getting punched and hit and, all these different ways. And like, that's, that's really fun for me. So. Yeah. That's, that's, I could see that how that would be. I mean, that's definitely like a unique acting role for sure. Yeah. Or like transformation videos where I can start with like my glasses on and my hair up and I'm very uptight, you know, and then I transform into a slutty, like bimbo, you know, um, those are fun. Those are really fun. (laughs) My, my favorite ones, um, I don't know why the, yeah, I mean, you know, like you, I've seen like every custom video request, et cetera. Yeah. Um, but sure. my favorites are the pie in the face fetish. Oh yeah. Like, to pie. me, I just like, you get a girl all dressed up, you put all this makeup on her, like, you know, yeah. so a lot of, they want like a gown, like, like she's, you know, fucking homecoming queen and just yeah. fucking throw pies at her. I just love that. <laughs> ridiculous. Well, to there's so many different angles you could analyze that from, right? Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to mess endless, up something endless. with Christine, but yeah, yeah. Uh, those are also fun. If I do stuff like that, they're definitely the last shoots of the day, of course. So, <laughs> yeah. Wilson, thank you so much for joining us. It's been such a pleasure to get to know you. Um, we are going to do a bonus Q and a for my Patreon members only. So if you are a Patreon member, you will be able to, um, check out this, uh, extra little bonus clip that we're going to do with questions that my Patreon members have actually submitted. Um, if you're not, you should definitely go join patreon.com slash Holly Randall unfiltered. But for now we're going to wrap it up here. So Sin, can you tell everybody where they can find you on social media? Yes, absolutely. So, uh, my Twitter is at Sin Sage, S I N N S A G E. Um, so please find me there. You can find all my stuff there. My website is sin sage.com. You can find all my stuff there too. Uh, Instagram, I'm at real sin sage. And my OnlyFans is OnlyFans.com slash SinSage. Try to make everything real easy. It's all pretty much my name. And you can find me out there. I got a Reddit and all that other stuff too. So I'm everywhere. Just go find me. (laughs) Fantastic. And you guys can find me at Holly Randall on Twitter and on Instagram. I just mentioned my Patreon page. Go uh, support me there if you want to um, support this podcast. And I am also on TikTok. I 
recently started adding a lot more content on there. There's little like snippets from my podcast interviews, as well as some um, custom uh, clips that I'm doing there. I'm still learning, but um, I'm actually kind of having fun with it now. So uh, go check me out over there. I'm at Holly Randall Unfiltered. Thank you guys so much for listening or watching wherever you are, and I'll see you next week. Are you in a couple looking for a third? Or are you single and searching for a dating app that actually encourages you to embrace your sexual side? Field values sex positivity and encourages you to share your desires and interests directly to your profile. You can share freely about how traditional or how kinky you may be. And here's some great news. You can download the app for free by going to field.co. Just click on the link in our episode description to get the Field app for free today.